Ladies and gentlemen, this RedGamerTed.com video, we have yet more news on the Xbox One and the region restrictions. Microsoft have confirmed that the Xbox One will be region locked. As usual, we do actually have a quote for this. Similar to the movie and music industry, games must meet country-specific regulatory guidelines before they are cleared for sale. We will continue to work with our partners to follow these guidelines with Xbox One. End of quote. That was by a Microsoft representative. So, yeah. Um, personally, I hate region locks, but I'll go into that in just a moment. We're not really sure just how stringent these region locks are going to be. For example, the Xbox 360, you can actually play certain games um, from different regions on your system. With certain websites making a living off of selling basically games from one country to another country cheaper. For example, Alan Wake, the PAL version, will work on an NTSCU system in the United States. However, it's unknown whether it will work on a Japanese system. Similarly, we have Amped Free, the US version, will work on PAL and of course, US, but will not work in Japan. So, as I said, just how stringent this is going to be. Now, Microsoft have been quite upfront with this, and I appreciate that because I like to know before we buy the system. So, we're not sure whether it's going to be up to the the developers slash publishers of the games of whether it's going to work in certain regions. For example, I suppose it depends upon the laws of that country and so forth, whether, say, certain things need to be censored in a particular region. Sony haven't mentioned anything on this yet. That doesn't mean that there will or will not be a region lock on the PS4. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see regarding that. No doubt as well, we'll be seeing this for distributed media. And by distributed media, I mean digital media, as in downloadable games, movies and so forth. We'll go into the the media side of it, such as movies and TV shows, in just a moment. But similarly, you cannot have a game that is, say, available in uh, the United States and, say, Europe, but not, for example, available in Japan, available um, by retail means anyway, but then allow that via digital means. So, in other words, it can't then suddenly appear on the, the Japanese store. So, no doubt there are going to be some region locks involved there as well, which they have alluded to in this um, quotation. Now, the purpose of this, obviously, is due to rights um, and distribution, or, you know, language locks, uh, and so forth. So, we also then, of course, talk about films and TV shows. Now, I've used this example a couple of times previously, and that would be something along the lines of Netflix, because I always feel that's a perfect example. Netflix is a simple case of different countries that get different access to different content. So, for example, if you watch the US Netflix, you may get TV shows that um, are prevalent in the United States, or maybe they're prevalent in the UK as well, but the UK just doesn't have rights to those, perhaps because, for example, um, one of our broadcasting uh, networks, for example, Sky, may have exclusive rights to air that show, therefore Netflix cannot show that um, well, show, if you get the, the general idea. And so, if you were to, for example, uh, log in to Netflix in the United States and then go onto a plane and then log in in the UK, you will notice completely different content. Well, not completely different. Obviously, there is some, some crossover, but for the most part, you will definitely notice, oh, okay, this film is not available in this region and this film is not available in that region. That doesn't necessarily mean that one region is inferior or superior to the other. For example, I have had a look at the US Netflix and there are definitely certain shows that are not on the UK Netflix. On the other hand, there are also a lot of sh uh, movies in the UK that are, that are exclusive to the UK Netflix. Well, I don't know about exclusive, but they're definitely not on the US Netflix. And this, of course, will be very similar here. No doubt there will be certain movies and content due to distribution rights and so forth that simply will not be allowed to be shown in certain regions. Now, obviously, for those in the techno, there are ways around this, which I'm not really going to go into in this particular video because I don't really think it uh, exactly merits it. The problem, 
I will be, well, because obviously the Xbox uh, One is quite a smart console, it'll be interesting just how it can detect this. For example, if your region suddenly changes from, say, oh, I don't know, UK to Japan, it would be quite interesting how the console will distinguish, or even if it will be able to distinguish these right differences. Now, as I promised just around the start of this video, I have my own thoughts on this. Personally, I hate region lockouts, especially when games are concerned. Now, it's actually less of a big deal now than what it used to be. And allow me to give you an example. Back in the days of the PlayStation 1, and certainly slightly before that, and even slightly after that, game releases were staggered. And by which I mean that sometimes you could wait half a year, or even up to a year in some cases, for a game to be released from one region to another. And that's if they could be asked to actually translate or simply transfer the code. Now, one of the reasons for this, especially if you happen to be in a PAL territory, and believe me, being in a PAL territory wasn't your friend, if you excuse the pun, was because of our TVs work differently. Um... I'm not going to go too much in the technical ins and outs of it, but there was basically differences on the refresh rates of the screen and the amount of uh, l um, lines on the TV and so forth. Now, this is becoming less of a big deal now, but certainly back then it was a pain in the buttocks. And so, conversely, it simply took a long time. And sometimes we got, well, basically ridiculously awful ports of our games. Uh, fighting games in particular, you I believe it was 17.5%, if I'm not mistaken, percent slower, uh, which was really noticeable in certain games like Street Fighter and Tekken. If you happen to play on a US version of, say, Tekken, and then you happen to play on, say, a UK version of Tekken, by golly gosh, it was pretty awful. You could... It pretty much felt like you were playing underwater and it took you a good several matches to be able to adjust. You had to basically slow down the button inputs and everything else. And the same with Street Fighter. Street Fighter wasn't so bad because for the most part, in a lot of the titles anyway, there was speed setting. So you could simply put it up one speed notch and it would be akin of playing in a different territory. Obviously the timings were still slightly different for the most part, but at least it gave some help. Now, of course, we don't really need to worry about that. Even so, there are still release delays. In other words, a game isn't necessarily released uh, worldwide in the same region. There are other reasons, of course, for them to actually, well, region lock certain things. It could be distribution or even simple things. For example, Sony Europe, just for example, or Microsoft Europe, want to make those profits themselves. They don't want to be eating or they don't want their profits eaten from, say, the US division. And all of these make very, very, very big differences to the bottom corporate line because they want to be able to closely monitor how well a game is selling in a particular region. All of these are huge issues. Um, but mostly, to be honest with you, right now it's to do with licensing agreements. Um, and it doesn't help us as consumers. Now, to be honest with you, from my personal perspective as a primarily PC gamer, it actually pisses me off immensely on Steam. Um, because in some cases you can have a week or even a couple of weeks delay on certain titles. And there are, once again, ways to activate this. I'm not going to go into that for legality's sake in this video. Um... But honestly speaking, it's just a pain in the buttocks because I don't really care. You know, it's like if I've played, if I've paid money for a game, uh, if it's digital, I just want the game to activate straight away. And it really does bug me. It's one of my biggest bugbears, especially when you see like a week or two week delay in some cases. Uh, obviously, if it's a day, it doesn't bother me too much. But when it's a, a substantial amount of time, especially since most of the games I'm playing on PC are already translated. For example, let's say I'm talking about oh, I don't know, Resident Evil Revelations. The US release and the UK release is no real difference because, well, it's PC. So in other words, there's no real translation to deal with, so it's purely licensing. 
Um, and it can be a pain in the buttocks. And in my opinion, it doesn't do that um, much for customer relationship versus piracy either. But in regards to the Xbox One, it's certainly going to be very curious how Microsoft plan to police this because obviously ways to circumvent region locking is certainly becoming more prevalent. I'll be curious, given Sony's previous starts with the PlayStation 3, just how they're going to market and deal with the PS3 thing. Now obviously it's not just down to Sony, it's also down to the developers for the games and so on as well. So... Yeah, it's never a simple uh, subject. That's why it's always um, that much more tricky for developers and console manufacturers. So, once again, I don't particularly blame Microsoft for this because obviously they cannot help the fact that, say, Fox do not want a certain TV show uh, airable in, say, Canada or in the UK or France or whatever. That is not Microsoft's fault. They do not own you know, whatever TV show that is. They do not own the rights to 24. It's not theirs. They can simply say, please, can we allow it in this region? And if they say no, because, um, you know, these guys have exclusive rights to air it in that region, or, you know, you can have it in three months' time when their exclusivity clause runs out, or whatever circumstances, you know, there's dozens of different uh, circumstances, and by no means am I an IP lawyer, so, or contract lawyer for that matter, then, well, things just become more and more grey. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, despite the fact it's a somewhat short one, at least for me. Um, take care of yourselves, and bye for now.